Hi guys, how are you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another one of my TIFF 2014 reviews. Okay, I'm a little bit ticked about this one because I recorded like a very, very passionate review of this movie um, on my camera in between movies this afternoon, and it is just taking forever to upload on YouTube. And I really want to get these reviews up like ASAP, so I've decided to do it again on the webcam, and I just hope that I can um, retransmit some of that original passion that I had when I did that review, because I did it like right after I got out of the movie, pretty much, and I was all fired up. And I'm still fired up, but anyway, you know, second time around, you never quite, you know... Make all the points you made the first time, but I'll do my best. Okay, so this, this is a review of Love and Mercy, uh, which is directed by Bill Polad. It's an American film. Stars Paul Dano and John Cusack in dual roles as the same person, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. This is a feature film about the life of Brian Wilson. And, oh my God, I was just so blown away by this film. It was splendid, superb amazing, wonderful. I loved this film. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Not only because I'm a music fan, not only because I was a, a Beach Boys, uh, a real Beach Boys fanatic when I was an early teenager, um, but just for the, the film itself was just great. So even if you're not a music fan, which how can you not be? How can anybody not be a music fan? But um, if you're not, if you're not a Beach Boys fan, whatever, you're still going to enjoy this film because it's really, really great. Acting is amazing. I can foresee Oscar nominations here, uh, definitely for Paul Dano, hopefully for John Cusack, too. I'm hoping. I'm crossing my fingers. But um, anyway, let me get to the chase here. Okay, so this movie, as I said, it's it, both of these actors portray Brian Wilson at different periods of his life. Paul Dano portrays him in the 60s, like when the Beach Boys were just starting out and when they reached the height of their fame. And John Cusack played him in the, I believe, the 80s, early 90s, when he was very mentally ill and when he was under the care of this doctor, Eugene Landy. Um, and, I mean, both of them were just so, so incredible in this movie. Um, I think Paul Dano is going to get more attention for his performance in this movie than John Cusack. I'm, I, I get the feeling, and I hope it's not the case, um, because it's really not fair. Um, although he did, uh, you know, they both, they were both just perfect, perfect in their roles. But I think Paul Dano had kind of the showier part because he played him when he was like, sort in his, when he was in his early 20s, when the Beach Boys were like, you know, just, you know, at the height of their fame and when they were, when they were recording and composing and arranging all of their music. And it was kind of just more like a showier sort of, you know, performance that way, but John Cusack played him very, very, very low key. It was such a subtle performance, but so brilliant, so brilliant. He put, like, he showed how he became this very lost, mentally ill, helpless kind of person, and he just did it so well. He did it so well, and it was so great to see him again. I haven't seen John Cusack in a movie for quite a long time. I've always liked John Cusack. always had a bit of a crush on him ever since I saw that movie, The Sure Thing, which was a, just a fantastic comedy by Rob Reiner. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it. It's just such a funny film, and he was so great in that as well. He's been in a lot of good movies, and I think really he's kind of an underrated actor, you know? He's a very well-respected actor, but I don't think he's gotten as much acclaim as he should, as he deserves. And I hope, I really, really hope he gets it for this film. Um, but anyways, okay, hang on. Okay, so when the movie starts off, we see the John Cusack, Brian Wilson. He's in a car dealership. He's in this Cadillac. He's in a car, and he's kind of hunched over, fiddling with something on the floor. And this beautiful, beautiful blonde woman comes over. She's a car sales lady. And she's standing there, and she's looking at him, and she's like, can I help you? And he, you know, sits up, and oh, but, and his shoes are on the floor in front of the car. And she's like, your shoes are off. And he said, yeah, I took them off because I had sand in them, and I didn't want to mess up the car. And so they start chatting. At first, she has no idea who he is. They just start chatting. And he's real, she can tell right away that this is this guy's a little bit different, a little bit odd, a little bit off. But you can tell she really likes him. He's a very likable person. He's just very, very sweet. 
And like I said, low key and just kind of like, you know, you, he gives off that lost, helpless kind of, you know, vibe, right? And so she's talking to him and he says, well, I want to buy this car. And she's, oh, really? And so anyway, then we see his handlers in the, uh, in the showroom and they come over. One of them is his doctor, Eugene Landy, who was also brilliantly played by Paul Giamatti. He was so good in this movie. Everybody was. This cast was mind blowing. Um, and his bodyguard and a couple other guys. And so they come over, they see them talking. And he's like, do you know who this is? And she's like, no. And he's like, this is Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. And she looks at him and goes, oh, you didn't mention that. And uh, so anyway, he decides to take the car. And then he asks her out on a date. And um, <clears throat> I guess takes her number or whatever. And so that's how the movie starts off. And uh, his love interest, uh, the woman who would become his future wife, her name was, I think it was Merit. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I can't remember at the moment. But anyway, it was his future wife. She was played by Elizabeth Banks, this beautiful, beautiful blonde actress, quintessential California girl. I don't know if she's from California or not, but she certainly looked the part if she isn't. Uh, but she was really, really good, too. She was a really, really sweet woman, really nice and right off the bat. Like they, And they had amazing chemistry together, her and John Cusack. And, uh, you know, right off the bat, they, they you could tell, like, this was going places, you know, they liked each other and it was just so sweet and, and romantic and, and just charming the way the relationship developed between them. But I mean, the, his handlers are always around, right? This, this Landy guy, oh my God, and his bodyguards and everything. And this guy, this Eugene Landy guy, um, he completely controlled his life. He can, like, he had him on medic. He was over medicating him. Um, he would, he would berate him. He would scream in his face. He would control him, tell him who he could see, who he could not see. He would bar people from seeing him. Uh, Brian Wilson hadn't seen his family for years, um, you know, because of this guy. Uh, I guess at least partially due to this guy. And so he just completely, like, ran his life. He was actually his legal guardian at the time. So the movie fluctuates between, you know, the, the Brian Wilson, John Cusack in the 80s or 90s, and then the Paul Dano, John Cusack back in the 60s when he was in his early 20s and when the Beach Boys were, were you know, at the height of their fame and, and making all their music. And Paul Dano was just, the guy's a great actor. I've seen him in a lot of movies, always been a fan of him as well. He's just so, he, he has a way of playing these characters that are off, you know, that are just off center. He's so, so good at it. And uh, they could not have picked a better guy to play Brian Wilson at this period in his life. He was just perfect. Um, and Brian Wilson was a musical genius. And the Paul Dano side of the character really, really showed that how he would compose the songs in his head. Like, I mean, he was troubled from, from even in his early 20s. So, okay, there were three brothers. There was Brian Wilson, Carl Wilson, and Dennis Wilson. And their father was extremely abusive, verbally, physically abusive. And that was, I'm sure, partially one of the reasons why Brian Wilson became as messed up as he did, was his father. I mean, they had a horrific childhood. And um, so he would hear, like, voices and shit like that. But he would also hear music in his head. And he would be obsessed about getting the sounds, like, down to the, like, most minute detail. So whenever they would go in the studio, he'd be arranging all the instruments and uh, producing it. You know, he was in charge of everything. And, you know, you've heard the Beach Boys music. It came out, like, you know, beautifully, right? I mean, the guy was just, he had a gift. He was a genius. And um, so he, the Paul Dano side of him, we see him getting progressively, like he starts off a little bit, you know, kind of odd, you know, he's a little bit, you know, weird here and there. But then as they grow more and more famous, as they get more and more fame and wealth and all that, like he really starts to lose it. And even when he was older, he still had a relationship with his father and he would ask his father for feedback on his music and his father would always berate him and tell him, you know, diss it and down it. He was a very, very angry, bitter man, and obviously um, envious of his son's success. And, you know, I mean, he was just toxic. You could not pick a more toxic person. Um, and um, so the, the movie did such a great job of showing that, you know, like how his background contributed to who he was and how he was, you know. And, I mean, the music in this movie was incredible. Uh, there was both actual Beach Boys music and Paul Dano. I did not realize what a great singer he was. 
he sang God Only Knows in this movie. His voice is beautiful, and he sounded so much like Brian Wilson. It was Paul Dano singing. It was just beautiful. He did it wonderfully. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the movie fluctuates in, in but like, there's, flash, there's flashbacks, flash forwards, and it really, really works. It's not confusing. It's not off-putting. It's not jarring. It works perfectly. It puts the whole story in context, right? So we see the young Brian Wilson and the older Brian Wilson. And, um, so the John Cusack side is where he's, you know, he hasn't been able to get out of bed for two years, so he had to go get this doctor to help him, and this guy has completely isolated him, and like I said, he restricts access to him, and plus he's, like, bleeding him dry for money. I mean, he's, he's really a scary person. You know, there's, there's scenes in here where Paul Giamatti is just, like, screaming in his face and just berating him, and the woman he's with, his future wife, is just like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, she knows this is, like, horrible, this is really, really bad for him, but he's so, um, he's so lost, he's so helpless that she keeps trying to help him, say, listen, you've got to get out of the situation, but he's just so, you know, I guess he became dependent on this guy, right, so it was really, really hard to, to get him away and help him, um, but anyway, I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm remembering everything I said in my original review, but the bottom line is, guys, you have to see this movie. It's, it's brilliant. And I hope it, I can see this getting an Oscar nomination for Best Picture as well, because it was so, so good. You have to see this movie. It was awesome, awesome movie. Hang on. Oh yeah, okay. I didn't, I don't want to do any spoilers here, but I want to mention a couple of scenes that really, really stuck with me and that I just loved. I mean, I loved all the scenes, but these two in particular stuck in my mind and they were both from the John Cusack, um, side. Uh, one time he's on a date with this, with this woman in a restaurant and they're always, they're always with people. There's always people beside them and stuff. But anyway, they're sitting in this booth, they're having dinner and he's telling her about his childhood and how his dad, you know, like abused, abused all of them. And she's just sitting there horrified listening to all this. And, um, you know, she says to him, I'm, I'm so, so sorry that that happened to you. And, you know, he's really, he's, he's so sweet. He's like, well, you know, I really kind of have to thank my dad because he scared the music out of me or something like that. And I thought that just so perfectly summed it up, you know. Like I said, that was one of the reasons why he was such a genius is because of all this torment that he went through, right, from his childhood. Um, oh, yeah, and then the other scene was uh, when he's, he, he, him and her are finally alone in his place for once. And they're, he's showing her his house for the first, his, one, of his, one of his houses, his beach house for the first time. And she's like, oh my God, so beautiful. So he takes her over to this piano and um, sits her down and he starts playing this little tune and she's sitting beside him and she's like, oh, that's so pretty, that's really nice. And he says to her, um, oh, that was the music that played in my head when I first saw you. And I was just like, oh my God, be still my beating heart, you know? It was so, so romantic and so sweet and, you know, really, really summed up his character, I think, you know? Um, I mean, there were so many Paul Dano scenes also that were great, but those two just kind of stuck in my mind. And, um, you know, I just... There's so much to like about this movie. There's so much to like. And one of the great things about TIFF is seeing a movie like this ahead of everybody else, sorry guys, but seeing it before you, but sharing my enthusiasm with you about it and, you know, being able to tell you guys you have to see this movie because it is so great. And that's what I'm telling you. You guys have to see this movie. It's brilliant. It's really, really well done. Such a great tribute to him. And, um, yeah, you know, um, there you go. Um, I don't think I got as much of the passion out in this review as I did in my original one. And if I do manage to upload it, you know, finally on, on YouTube, I might, I might throw that one 